What's up, YouTube? Back with another video. I'm eight weeks out right now of my, uh, my competition. Um, we got deficit deadlifts today. I've only, I've only been doing deficit deadlifts besides when I went to Corpus Christi, I pulled off the floor, not a deficit. I'm trying to build my strength off the ground. Uh, my lockout feels very strong, but now I got weak off the ground, so now I'm doing a deficit. So just warming up right now, we got 315 on the bar. Today is a top set of three, so we'll see what I could do for three. Whew, felt good. Um, I always tell people you got to move the lightweight like it's your max. That's how you're going to be become very explosive and kind of just only know how to move fast. A lot of people think about the technique and they're not going as fast as possible. You always want to move that weight as fast as possible. guys we got a uh, 600 pounds on the bar we're doing deficits today um, I got a top set of three I didn't deadlift last week because I went a little off program when I went to Texas I tried to pull 705 I did 675 belt list but that went 705 so my back's a little bit tight um, I didn't deadlift last week so last time I did this I did 585 for a triple um, I, I did my warm-up set at 495 felt pretty heavy I'm jumping all the way from 495 all the way to 600 so uh, let's hopefully move is a good on the bar just failed the 600 for three I only got two reps like I said my grip was slipping it's kind of weird I always slip my grip on my right side but now my left hand was like the one not being like opening up so I probably just got some like knots in my forearms so. these are the reps where you get stronger though right here It's tough. Got two more sets to go right there. These deadlifts. Um, we're gonna go on to some Copenhagen planks. I've done these before. Shout out to Steffi Cohen. She showed me these when I was getting programmed by her. So you gotta think, we're always pushing our knees out. I always say push your knees out, knees out. So you're, you're, you're strengthening, you're, uh, you're uh, what's it called? You're strengthening your adductors, you're strengthening your adductors, but you're not isolating. Just like um, a lower back, when you squat, you're using your, your lower back, but you're not isolating your lower back. That's why we go on the GHD and do the back extension so we can isolate our lower back, work on that posterior chain. Same with your adductors. Only time you can really, um, what's it called? Uh, isolate them if you, if you have like those machines that go in and out that you see at like 24 um we obviously don't have those but ain't nothing better like some good old body weight stuff so um if you're a beginner put your knee uh, all the way up into here because it's just really hard so you can put your knee up to here and then from here you want to think about coming straight up keeping your legs straight keeping your body straight don't come back here with your hips keep your hips straight and you want to hold this for about 30 seconds like I said, if that's a beginner, if you get a little bit more advanced. When I first did this, I had to go to right there to my knee. I felt like I was going to rip this shit. So now, 
been a little bit more advanced. I don't do these consistently too, though, so I need to get better at these. So now I'm going to come here. Get my foot. Ow, it's hurting my ankle. All right. One, two. Make sure this leg too is not touching the ground. It makes ex extra weight. If, you're, if you can't though, it's fine. You'll still get a good workout, but put all that strain on the adductor. Woo! Switch. So that's my good side. This side's definitely more weak. This is my weak side, my right side. Oh, fuck. Oh, this is hurting my knee. I kind of hurt my knee playing basketball the other day, so I'm gonna try to go a little bit higher up. How long should people be doing these holds? Like I said, 30 seconds. If 30 second feels too much, start with 15. Yeah, like I said, so my, I'm not, like I said, my knee was kind of bothering me, so me putting my ankle was putting a little bit of strain, but um, yeah, like I said, make sure you go, don't, don't try to make it the hardest the first time you're doing it, make it easier, and then slowly progress to your ankle, and I'm telling you, these will really help keep your adductors healthy, and you're growing too, a lot of power lifters I've been watching in the game, they like tear their growing, and that would be horrible, that's like all up in here, so much on tie-in spots, so Keep your adductors healthy and you're growing. Give it a shot. All right, guys, now we're gonna go into some hamstring curls. Um, I'm actually gonna do the single leg because um, you just feel anything with single leg, you're gonna feel more of an isolation and you can really feel your imbalances. My left leg is much stronger, so when I do a single leg on the left side, it feels so easy, but my right side, it feels very hard. So just, um, if you have imbalance problems, try single leg and then right after this, we're gonna go straight into the um, sled pull, working my quads. Um, I, I do it before I, I do any type of leg exercise and after to flush new blood into that muscle so you don't get that lactic acid just staying in your muscles and you get that soreness. So let's get it, baby. Like I said, single leg. So I'm going to go bad leg first. That's one. Ooh, good squeeze. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. God damn. One, two, three, four. Seven. Don't forget that squeeze at the top. Eight. Nine. Ten. Last two. That's one. Ooh. Man, that shit burns. Burning. All right, now we're going straight to the sled pull. There is no other workout that gets my quads pumped up like this lead pool and it seriously only takes like one set and I just feel the blood rushing to my quads. So the biggest thing with this is taking that step back. Take a step back. Take a step back. You want to feel it in your toes or grabbing the ground with your toes. Don't just lean back and don't do this because this is not, my knees are not going over my toes. I want that step back, step back, step back, step back, step back, step back. Step back, step back. Uh, uh, uh. Take it back. Get right here, move to see like my legs going, that knee over the toe when I take that step back. 
Like I said, nothing else gets my quads more pumped than this sled pull. This helped me come back from my knee injury that you guys know. I messed my knee up about a year ago. Like I said, it really just gets blood to that VMO area. And I like doing it um, super setting with my hamstring curls because it just gets my whole fucking leg super pumped. My hamstrings are pumped right now. My quads are pumped. So let's go back to the hamstrings. All right, guys. Now, last exercise. I'm um, second to last exercise. I got some core to do after this. Um, back extensions with this fucking... I don't even know how heavy this bag weighs. It's something like 200 pounds because it's supposed to be a 200 pound sandbag, but there's extra room, so we just threw as much sand as we could in there. We gotta weigh this thing. I forgot how much this shit I weighs. Say we should weigh it right yeah, now. we should weigh it. We'll weigh it after this. All right, come here, big girl. Bro, this shit's so fucking heavy. are so hard but like I said those are probably my weakest point right here in my lower back because um, I'm just not strong bent over like that and so what this does really focus on your lower back pretty much your whole posterior chain your hamstrings your glutes and your upper back so definitely getting stronger at these I was being a little bitch and only doing like 50, uh, 45 pounds 75 pounds but this is 200 pounds now so it's tough we got dumbbell RDLs um, the two ways to only grow your hamstrings are uh, isolation and a stretch. So you either got to do a hamstring curl or you got to do a gang of RDL. So I like doing the um, hamstring curl first because it's an isolation movement. It gets my hamstrings very tight. And then I do this at the end so I could go home with a not, not so tight muscle because, um, like I said, the isolation, the hamstring curl gets everything nice and tight. And this is a lengthening exercise where it's lengthening those hamstrings. All right, let's get it, baby. <laughs> All I'm thinking about right here is just pushing my ass out. Don't let my chest um, fall down. All right, we got a uh, hanging leg raises. Gonna do something a little bit different. I've done this before. I used to do it every once in a while. Um, normally I just bring my knees to my chest, but like I said, um, we're trying to get more isolation work. So what I'm gonna do is just uh, bring my knees to my chest, have uh, Isaac rest this 45 pound plate on my knees and see how long I can hold it for. Probably go for like 30 minutes. I mean 30 minutes, 30 seconds. There you go, that's good. <sighs> God damn. Those are hard. I haven't done that in a while. I'll try to get two more sets for 30 seconds. Damn, that shit was hard. Just finished up today's training. We did um, deficit deadlifts. I did 600 for two reps. I'm supposed to get three, but man, my fucking grip just wasn't there today. Like I said, um, if you're, uh, my forms are so tight from just doing a lot of benching, anything, just squeezing the barbell. So I definitely got to get these guys released so I could get some better um, grip work. And then just went into the accessories I do for deadlifts, nothing too crazy, just some hamstrings, just some sled pull, just some core, some RDLs. But yeah, man, eight weeks out, next week's gonna be seven weeks out for my first time competing in um, almost four years, bro. So I'm super excited. Um, drop a comment below what you guys wanna see a little bit more of and I'll try to give that to you. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. See you guys later.